Welcome to Drawing from the Collection Live for Children. My name is Tiffany Wolf Smith. I am Assistant Curator of Education here at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. So we've been doing this live version of Drawing from the Collection for a while now. This is our last live session. We'll go back to in-person on September 5th. We'll meet in the museum's lobby at 2 p.m. with our artist, Cheryl Anaya. So for our last session today, Joining us is California-based artist Cassie Fawn. Cassie earned an MFA from the University of North Texas and currently works primarily with drawing, installation, and video. She has always enjoyed arts as a means of processing and communicating ideas in life and enjoys sharing this with others of all ages and experiences in the arts. She enjoys community outreach and recently led workshops for Art League Houston's summer intensive program and for the Sunshine Center in Galveston, Texas, which is a center for adults with de developmental disabilities. Cassie is currently setting up a new studio space in California where she is working on small scale drawing and video projects. So Cassie, thank you for joining us today for Drawing from the Collection. We're so glad you're here. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. All the way from California. <laughs> so um, Cassie, you have chosen to focus on a large acrylic painting in the permanent collection, which is Nancy Graves titled Camouflage Series Number One from 1971. So tell us a little bit about what you like about Nancy Graves. Yeah, so Nancy Graves has always been someone um, that I've been drawn to, especially in the museum when I go to the modern in Fort Worth. And the first thing that draws me to her is the color, but it's something also the scientific sources. So when she gets into these scientific ideas, she creates an image that's both scientific, but also whimsical, playful. So it's both those things exact in a way, but has some uh, wiggle room. So to me, it feels like science through the very young eye. It's imaginative, inventive, uh, full of possibilities. Yes, she she's a she is a fun one, and we've talked about her recently in some other programming and how she she seems to have no material restrictions on herself, and you can see that in some of the other works in the Modern's collection and Wheel About, and then the camel skin piece that we own too. So she's a really fun artist to look at. Um, tell us a little bit about what you find exciting about this particular work, Camouflage Series Number One. So again, the color at first. So I was have been drawn to this painting from across the room for color. It's bright and varied, but there's also something subtle and maybe a little bit muted about it at the same time. And also that it's a little bit ambiguous. And the title. Uh, where it talks about camouflage makes me start wondering what I'm looking at. So what's camouflaged here? And I look for a lot of different images. I try to piece together um, mentally what I'm seeing here. And that gives me a lot of possibilities just as a viewer. And when I research her work a little bit more, then I came to know that this is based off of images of ocean life on the seafloor, that a lot of times she'll use like topographical maps as sources or other scientific sources for her imagery, which then in some ways only opens up more possibilities. Um, but I start thinking what else could be disguised here? Or how could I create an image like this? What could I camouflage? Mm -hmm. um, how that comes across in the end. Well, great. Well, we are so excited to see what project you have for us. What materials do we need to get ready? So pretty simple materials today. You'll need some thick paper. You can use Bristol paper or any other thick paper that will take ink. So marker paper or what I have right here is a pad of mixed media paper. Um, I have markers. So what I'm specifically using today are these uh, dual brush markers, but you don't, any markers will work fine, just a variety of colors. And then for a source image, I've got a map. You can have a topographical map. What I have is a map of the seafloor, actually at the Gulf of Mexico. And I chose that because I just moved to California from Galveston. I'm very interested in the ocean and the Gulf and all those bodies of water, but this one having just left it 
as the memories and ideas I want to think about. So your image that you choose may be somewhere special to you, or maybe it's just an image that you find really interesting visually. And I'm also going to work from my imagination a bit, but that's my. Cool. And um, kids, Cassie and I did a quick Google search just of topographical maps and tons of good images popped up. So it'll be easy to find, find something real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and turn all the power over to Cassie and spotlight her hands and we can get started. All right. So for today's project, we're gonna use this map or the map that you choose and our memories or imagination a bit together to create an image that in the end, it may look pretty abstract. We're going to use a technique like what Nancy Graves um, has used in this painting that we're looking at um, called pointillism. So we're going to use a lot of small dots or strokes to create an overall image. The idea is that when we're finished, when you look at it from a distance, those dots or those tiny marks are going to blend together to our eye. That's the same thing we're doing all the time when we're looking at digital work, resolution has gotten so high that we don't see those pixels, but if you zoom in really far, you see pixels. Um, so that's a very similar idea. So to get started, I've got my image. I'm going to use, you can use whatever color you want to get started, but I'm going to use a light color to use dots. I'm not going to do lines, but just dots to start mapping and we're using an actual map and I'm going to kind of map out the composition. So I'm looking at the shape that I have here and I'll just use a few dots to kind of mark in that shape. I'm not drawing a line because I'm going to avoid having any lines in this image, but dots. So I'm looking at my image Right now I'm going through this kind of shape of the seafloor as it gets close to the land. You see the land up here, the water. Your image may not have, if you've chosen your image, may not have water in it, but you just kind of get the shape locked in or marked in with dots instead of lines. And I chose kind of a more neutral color so that it might fade away if I want it to as I add more colors of it. And you can use a really light one too. I didn't want to go too light because then you might not be able to see it <laughs> on the video, but you can use a very light color as well. So more dots. pointillism or using this technique takes some patience, but the end result is pretty cool. Okay, so I have a general shape here marked in. And remember, this will be kind of abstract. We won't, we're not trying to make it a, like a super realistic copy of this image, so it can be relatively close. So now I'm going to start switch colors. Nancy Graves uses a variety of colors. Many of them are bright, so you can choose many different colors for your image. And I'm going to start adding some more dots. We think about the idea of camouflage as well. We all know what we're starting with, or maybe you know what image you're starting with, and you know what image I'm starting with, but your viewer may not, and that's okay. So we don't necessarily know what image Nancy Graves used. It doesn't have to look like that, and we can disguise it to different degrees. So I'm adding more and more little dots around. Right now I'm using a yellow. add more dots around. Your image that you chose, if you're looking at it 
especially if you're looking at it digitally, maybe in color or you have a color printer. <laughs> I printed mine out in black and white. You can do it either way, but one cool thing about, I think about printing it out in black and white is that I'm not trying to duplicate the colors, if that makes sense. So since it's black and white, I have to totally make up <laughs> my own colors. Can give us some cool results. So I've switched to blue. Takes a lot of build up, but I'm gonna switch to blue here and add some more. I'm gonna go in now a little bit into where the water would be on my image and add some more dots. So I'm branching out a little bit from that outside edge. The proximity, like how close dots are to each other, makes a big difference. If you put a lot of dots really close together, like this, then it's going to look darker from a distance. So I'll put some close together, some they're further apart. That changes how we see the image. Dots, dots, two more dots. So if I'm looking at my image here, this area is much darker. So if I want to make my image darker like that, then I will add a lot of dots over there. Add more dots of this blue, and then I'll probably switch and add some more dots of another color as well. You see how that's building up to look darker. We have a ways to go. Go ahead and put oops, this blue to the side. I'm going to pick it back up soon, but I'll set it aside for a moment. I'm going to add some purple. So we, you don't have to use realistic colors. You can. I have a little bit of blue over here, and I'm looking at water, but also have purple. It might be colors you don't expect. But that's where I think creativity or your own inventive ideas can come in just like Nancy Graves where we based off of something scientific but also be very purple dots This is something that takes time, but I think it's fun and kind of relaxing to make drawings like this. I'm gonna put the purple over here on the right too. I'm gonna be able to see that too well, but I'm gonna set those aside so I remember exactly which one I had. And now try another darker purple, varying the colors. Reach out a little bit, go a little lower. Fill in some of that map. Creating interpretation of a map. If you have a thick marker, your dots might be a little bit bigger. That's okay too. Might even take you a little less time to fill the page, but you can also practice with how hard you press down. So if you press down harder, you're gonna get a slightly bigger dot than if you just very lightly touch the paper. Add some dots up here. 
starting to fill in. So if you look at it from a distance, starting to see a little bit more of our image. We keep switching colors, trying out different ones. One thing too, if you try out a new color and you just start with a few dots, you haven't gone too far if you decide you don't like that color. It's not gonna be a huge mark on your page. So right now I'm using another blue, just adding some of those in. here. That's something that I want to add to mine, if you remember, I mentioned we would use a little bit of our memories or imaginations as well. Before I get too far or totally finish the map part, Something that I remember seeing a lot of when I was in Galveston, so I want to add this to my image, are jellyfish. <laughs> so I would see them come up on the beach when they washed up from the water. Fortunately, I didn't see too many when I was actually in the water, but up on the beach. And the image of them was always really interesting to me. So I'm going to add a little bit of a jellyfish shape. And again, we're, we're talking about camouflage here, so you're watching me make this drawing, you might know already that this is a jellyfish, but if you were just viewing it without knowing that, you might not realize what you're seeing. It's kind of disguised a bit within the other dots. So I have a little bit of the jellyfish there. There were different types too. I saw lots of different types of jellyfish. So I'm going to add Another one over here that has a little bit of a different shape. I'm using dots to make the shape. I'm still not using lines. So we had these, they were called moon jellies. And they had a really thick body and these short little tentacles on the bottom. And some of them, some of the other jellyfish had long tentacles like this one. So that two in pink, I might try a different Maybe a yellow. Let's do another moon jelly somewhere else. So these are from my memory and what I might imagine them to look like. Let's see. One more. And after I do these, I'm going to continue working on the map part for a while and then maybe add, maybe add some more jellyfish. We'll see. So I'm going to switch to a green marker. Haven't used the green yet and add some dots. Maybe I'll put some green up where the land may be, although it doesn't have to be. Green again, you can choose any colors you want. So maybe you want your land to be pink, and that's okay too. Put a little bit of green around my jellyfish, camouflage it again a bit, but also, as I talked about, a lot of the jellyfish that I saw were on the beach. So they were on. We weren't even in the water anymore. So if there's something special to you or interesting to you or something that you remember from a place that you want to add to your drawing, it could be anything. Switch colors again. 
Sandiana's in some blues. I'm gonna put some more yellow around. It's a diff slightly different yellow, but put some more yellow around this other jellyfish so I can camouflage them a bit more. This one is almost disappeared a little bit. So I kind of more camouflage there than the other. So you can play with different levels of the sky. Right now, I'm making pressing a little bit harder so the dots are a little bit bigger. Try that too. And do that with some blue as well. There's also, there's a lot of different artists that have worked in this technique that you can look at. But I love how Nancy Graves creates something that's pretty abstract. You can also use this technique to make something that's a lot more realistic, you especially if you use a lot more dots. This is also a type of drawing where it may not be as obvious to know when you're finished. So if you're not using a line, you may not think or may not realize if you're finished or not or it's hard to decide. I did have links online. But switch to green. Some more dots in here. I'm going to go back to the corner blue's turquoise that has been aside for a while. So a lot of times when we draw, I think maybe we hope that everyone knows exactly what we drew, but sometimes that isn't the intention. So sometimes we are making something that's more hidden, or you may know what I drew, but not everyone would know what this started as, <laughs> or what the idea was. Be something really interesting about that. One good thing to do, I think, when you're working is I step back and look at it a little bit. So I'm lean back <laughs> and look at mine a little bit. See maybe some areas where I might fill in a few more dots. You can fill your whole page if you want to. I think I like some having some of the white space on mine. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, just a tiny bit more. Back in some pink in here. And you could do a lot of different types of objects or images within yours. I just did the jellyfish, but maybe there's several different things that you wanted to add and you could do that as well. Camouflage this one a little bit and then it's gonna be at pretty good stopping point. Maybe I'll think about it, come back to it later. I think we're at a pretty point. I could keep going forever. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. It's kind of meditative, which is, yeah. is nice. So parents, if you want to give your kids something to keep them quiet for a little while, this is a great project for that. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Cassie, especially after your big move to California and making time to come to Drawing from the Collection. Um, and we love that you are our last virtual artist. So we will be back in person on September 5th at 2 p.m. in the Modern's Lobby. So bring your sketchbook and your pencils uh, ready to make some drawings. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you. Thank you.